previously on Wreckers the Checkers. Early morning start, we're off to JTR, John Tippin Racing this morning. Friend to friend number two for me. They've gladly jumped on board with a set of yellow gold XL rims for the RM250 build for me. You know, the rims that Team Suzuki ran back in the early 2000 days and I just had to have this item on the bike. It wasn't gonna be complete until I had a proper yellow gold. Made another call real quick. Jimmy at GC Vapor Blasting jumped in lastminute.com and vapor blasted my hubs for me, so they're looking a million bucks. They actually agreed to build the rims and wheel set for me. So double win for me, so pretty stoked. Yo, buddy. Mate. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Master builder, I heard you're the man to come <laughs> oh, and see. Never <laughs> Lovely yellow rims right here, still yeah, wrapped up. Yeah. Rip in. It's like Christmas, isn't it? First things first, grab your original wheel, get the lace pattern, so this is like a two cross pattern. Take your offset measurement from any surface to the edge of the rim. Lay your spokes out, make sure they're all the same length, same thread, no damage, no missing ones. Bit of anti-seize or, or grease or just something on there. Throw them in, same as your old wheel. Run them down, put a drop of oil under each of the nipples so that they uh, don't bind on themselves. And then uh, through the wheel, set it to the offset it was originally. Make sure it's got tension. Thanks to JTR and thanks to yourself for your time today. All right, so big day ahead. Got the engine back from race line. Um, this has been vapor blasted. So unfortunately, the bottom end couldn't be vapor blasted because it was we didn't actually take that apart. So we've got some tools here just from Super Cheap. Little wire wheel. I'm gonna use that on the um, the die grinder here and start to clean up all the old dirt and grime and stuff off there. So it might take a bit of time, but for that fit and finish part of the contest, it's gonna be unreal. It's coming up nicely. It is starting to gradually come together. It is. Got a bit of a shine there. What I'm gonna use is this um, Alley Bright. Give a bit more of a clean up, better than what it is now, and get into those corners and stuff where I can't get, quite get the tool in there. So we'll spray it on, uh, let it sit for a bit, let it work its action, use a couple of these brushes to agitate it, and then uh, we'll get it all off and see what it looks like. Woo! Yeah, boys. Wow. Start it up. We've come back to an even better present and Dan from MXRP has got the fork and shock back to us and man, what a difference this is gonna make. So shock spring was actually red, pretty well done. There was no bump stop in the shock. This thing has just been all freshly vapor blasted, new coating on the shock spring, all freshly powder coated. And then the forks as well. Dan's vapor blasted the fork cap, coated the fork lugs in a black finish for us. And yeah, he's gone over everything. He's put all the all fresh internals and oil. Yeah, this thing's gonna hit the track. Pretty pristine and can't wait to actually get out on it now and have a ride. What's the flash? Sneaky bolt box. <laughs> Impressed, eh? Like this is um, meant to be a genuine competition, but it uh, looks like some people are trying to uh, make their own rules. So do we got a problem? Dude, it's Friday, no problems. What's going down? People are cutting corners, cheating. Like a race. If you cut the track when you're racing, what do you do? Protest. Well, what? I knew you guys were a little competitive, which we like. I had the crew down in decals. Protest card. Who do you think's cheating? Definitely Mick Mac. He is cutting corners like no tomorrow. Phone of friends, taking advantage of the system, so uh, let's go serve him this thing, I reckon. I love that you guys are trying to build the best bikes, but this is a game. There's a winner. Serve him up. Let's go. Yo, Mick. Mate, I'm super stoked you got your wheels, man. Yeah. 
but I'm gonna throw one of these bad boys at you, mate. Oh, protest. Protest. I'm sure you're familiar with the protest. Yeah, been black flag since um, probably junior one, two, five days. Yes. Huh? Uh, unfortunately, uh, you've been protesting, Mick. The phone of friends, the free labor is one thing. Sure but the free parts on top has been protested. So what I'll need is receipts for purchase of the parts. Yeah. And that'll go to Breach. They'll do, um, and Nigel need your receipts in as, as well. Yep. So we can see where we're at. Um, this, this is a game and we ultimately want to build great bikes, but you have to follow the budget. And as you know, you'll be penalized for going over if you're over budget and the phone of friends were intended for labor. So your competitions notice something yeah. and we'll see. Your team in decals served you up a nice little decal. I love it. <laughs> it's all part of the game. Come at me. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy. What's going on, mate? Fun little protest there. Buddy. You like that? I think it's time for one of these cards to play out. Block pass, buddy. The mounted attack! They're oh! oh, they're both down! They're both Ah, uh, what? Yeah. You know those fancy yellow rims that you just protested me on? Yeah. You get to fit some nice Bridgestone tires to No, today. gross. That's Maybe cute. I can scratch them for you. Maybe you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun with that one, buddy. It's three o'clock on Friday. You got That's it. ridiculous. <laughs> Dude, do you know the amount of tires I've fitted? <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, so just got the engine finished, all nice and cleaned up. Got the clutch cover and the um, stator cover painted uh, in a nice grey colour to match the frame. Um, but now we've bloody got to change mixed tyres, so not too impressed. I was going to carry on with my carb this afternoon, but I'm going to have to put that aside and, and get on with mixed body wheels. So I've got my tyre levers and my B buddy here ready. So I'll just go grab that time machine and start ripping in. All right, so we've got a mixed wheel here. Um, we're gonna use the Easy Moose tire changer to install these tires. This has a big leverage arm on it, just makes it nice and easy to install the tire without using too many levers. We've also got the tires sitting in the sun to get them nice and warm. So fingers crossed we don't scratch mixed wheels and we'll get cracking. most important thing to do when uh, installing a front tire especially is make sure there's no directional marks on there. Uh, this Bridgestone is non-directional at all, so it can go on either way. We can chuck it on now. So just gonna spray a little bit of soapy water on there um, just to make it nice and easy to install. So the tire is nice and warm from being out in the sun. Uh, we'll just spray it up with a little bit of water, or soapy water, make it nice and easy to install. So less chance of scratching mixed stupid wheels. Always starting at the rim lock, makes it nice and easy push it on by hand, get it over the other side. So you can just about massage it down. A lot of the time the tire will go on, especially with that soapy water. So there's the front side, or well, the other side of the tire on without using any levers, so didn't even scratch it. <laughs> so I like to loosely put the nut on, just so it holds the tube in place. So we'll just work our way around. Next thing to do is ensure that this valve here is straight. A lot of the time when people put tubes in, they'll be on the piss. Just make sure that's straight. So straighten it up. You can't over lube it, so the more the better. Ensuring that tube's all the way in as well, so you're not pinching that. Just grab your bead buddy. This helps hold the tire down uh, and saves it from popping back up when you're trying to work the tire on. Uh, these are some of my favorite tire levers. They have a nice little lip on there, uh, so it saves you, you, know, you can get into the rim without scratching it as well. Um, these are the Ballard's ISDE tire levers, so highly recommend. So pull the tire out, press the lever in there. I like to put two in now, rather than trying to fight it when the tire is super tight. Uh, we'll roll over, make sure we hit on the edge there, not grabbing the tube. Happy days. You side. scratch them, you buy them. You gotta pay for them now. Okay. Uh oh. Are you a bit upset? No. No? Oh. I'm actually giggling. Oh no. Yeah, That's I, gonna the suck. Lever slip, the lever <laughs> slipped on this <laughs> side and. <laughs> sure. Finish, sure. Your, be, hey, your block pass. Sure. Your block pass just got stuffed. Yeah, but. <laughs> Deal's budget just got a lot cheaper. Nah, I'm not replacing it. Look at that, dude. It's a. Uh, oh no. That's a bummer. It's not, not really. No, it's okay. Oh, it doesn't affect really, my build. Not... If it was black rims, I'd just sharpie it in. But yeah. Well, that's here. what I was going to do, but I couldn't that hide work? that. Does that work? Oh, no, that doesn't work. That does work. <laughs> that does work. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> oh, you're, you're slightly pissed. Me? Yeah. Does this look like a face that's pissed? Is that look at the f***ing gouges in it, but, eh? But, you know? Jeez. Hey, look, look at ya. A little sharp stitch up. <laughs> yeah, you can do it on any rim. The silver rims, it works f***ing mint too. Don't know, just... <laughs> cool, alrighty. Exciting times today. We've just got our stuff back from 67MX. Uh, we sent it off last week for him to do some vapor blasting and seracoding on some parts. We went for a black triple clamps. Slightly different to what the original plan was. Um, and I think it's gonna be, look really good. So black hubs, triple clamps, ignition cover on one side, clutch cover on the other side, and then valve cover on top, clean and fresh. And last but not least, probably the most important of the lot, outer fork tubes that were all pitted, fresh and clean, ready to go. Can't wait to start assembling this. It's gonna be so cool. Um, before we put the engine covers back on, I mentioned earlier that we're gonna check the valve clearances. Quite a basic thing to do on a four stroke. It is not as daunting as what you might think. Generally, what you need to do is get the engine to top dead center. That's where the piston is right up the very top of the stroke. Um, there's a few ways of doing it. This particular bike, there's some markings. Turn the flywheel and it lines up with an indicator on the cases. Then what you would then do is check out where the cam lobes are positioned. And being a single cam, there's a rocker. And then you can see here that there is movement. This indicates top dead center. From there, set of clearances that each bike is specified. Every bike is different, so make sure you check the manual for the correct one. This one here, I've uh, just had a quick look online. So there's a set of clearances for the inlet and then a different set for the exhaust. So with the inlet, it's 0.13 of a mil through to a 0.19 of a millimeter. And exhaust, a little bit bigger of a gap, 0.25 to 0.31. And Really, once you're at top dead center, the next thing to do is just grab yourself a set of filler gauges and select the correct gauge according to what's specified in the manual. In this case, we'll start out with a 0.13. Generally, if something goes wrong with a valve clearance on an inlet, um, we'll close up. So you always go for the smallest one, then go upwards from there. So you can put it straight in. That's good. And then you can just go up the next one just to check. So flicking through here, the next one up is 0.15 and that will be in the middle of the range. And you can see it still goes through. However, there is drag. So it's pretty well a good indicator that the valve clearance is okay. You can tell by the bike was starting fine. There was no running issues. It's just more of a preventative or a routine check. Really quickly, while I've got you, we'll do the exhaust at the same time. So we'll start with 0.25 of a mil. And you can see again, there is movement on the rocker. There's clearance in there. So that's the closed one. Normally, if it closes up, you wouldn't be able to actually fit a feeler gauge in there. You'd have to then keep checking so you can see what the, the setting's at, and then you would shim it from there. At the moment, the, the clearances on this bike are fantastic, and that was indicated the bike's in really good condition. Started first kick. I didn't really expect there to be an issue, but before we go and put the valve cover back on, it's just a good thing to do. Friday afternoon here at MX store. It's happening, the boys are grinding, the parts are showing up, Sarah coating, fancy wheels, valve covers. Man, it's, it's all really coming together. I'm, I'm really happy with what's going on, but there's been some protests, some block passes, some guys are making some poor decisions on their budget, but that's part of the game, right? And it's getting fun for all of you to watch. We want you to engage with us. This is one of the most important parts about this comp is the viewer vote. Stay tuned, follow along. You are gonna be the one who helps choose the winner of this comp. So once again, I wanna make sure all of you are involved, so make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, do all those fun things and make sure you follow along this amazing series as these builders build the most amazing bikes for you all at home.